The Professional Developer Certification, ADO E717, is one of the most popular certifications in the Adobe Commerce lineup. I have had the extreme privilege of helping hundreds, and I think it's in the thousands of developers across the world achieve this certification. And I might say better yet, I've actually passed this test myself. So I'm here to fill you in on all the secrets. The secrets. What does it take to get this certification, including the biggest enemy to getting certified. And I'll tell you right here now, it is not too low of a score. Keep listening. Why should I get this certification? If you need a little convincing, let me help you out. You might be really good at Adobe Commerce, but this certification literally leverages Adobe to prove your own capabilities. You see, Adobe, gives you this badge, these credentials to display on your LinkedIn profile, in your email, your business, wherever you wanna put it. This sh tells your colleagues, the people you work with, the, the merchants that you're working with, that you know what you're talking about. It also tells that to recruiters too. And when you do get the certification, you shout it out to the world, mention me, and I'll give you my own round of kudos as well. The other question is, why should I start with this professional level certification. Why not just go for the expert one? Here's the thing. In English, we have a phrase called a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. What this is saying is grab an opportunity while you have it. Professional developer is likely significantly more achievable than the expert developer. Experts going to take so much more studying and really view the professional developer as your stepping stone to achieving the expert developer. Once you get it, you're certified, you're in the club, welcome. And I would guess that less than 50% of Adobe Commerce developers worldwide are actually certified. Now that number has definitely increased over the years. It was definitely lower than that, but I would still put it about 50%. Get that professional developer certification and use it as a rung in this ladder as you climb up it. I would love to say it's easy. And to be honest, I don't know you. It might be easy and it might not be either. Either way, I'm going to tell you what does it take to get certified. But I need to set some expectations. For the average person whom this test is geared for, I would suggest that you plan on at least 30 hours invested in studying. Of course, you whiz, <laughs> you don't have to study. Fine, that's great. But for the rest of us, we have to cram it all into our brains and it takes a long time to do this. So plan on 30 hours. Yes, it is going to definitely be investment. Okay, you know, I wanna chase a rabbit just for a second. I told you that the biggest enemy of getting certified was not a low score on the test. And I've seen this happen way too often because it happens to me too. You start preparing and then you fall off because life happens or work happens. I, I've seen it over and over again. A big project comes along, your manager jumps on your desk, says, I gotta have this done tomorrow. All right, so what's the vaccine for this? Two things, schedule your test. Number two, spend a consistent amount of time every day on studying. No vaccine is pro foolproof, but I'll tell you what, this is about as foolproof as it can get. So let's look at the four steps in order to achieve your Adobe Commerce Professional Developer Certification. Number one, get a local environment set up on your machine. And I mean, get that environment set up on your machine. We use a flavor of the tool called Warden. Our, our, the flavor of it is called Den. Search for Swift Otter Den. It'll pull it right up. It works well on the Mac M1 chips, super fast. I have it installed on my machine, use it all the time. All you have to do is install it and then drop Magento into it. It's seamless. You can have multiple projects running at once. It's the bee's knees when it comes to this. Oh, and by the way, you can also run it with varnish too. It, it, it repli replicates a production environment right here on your local machine. Couldn't it be any better. Number one, get that local environment set up and configured. You have to do it. Oh, and by the way, I should add, Use Xdebug too, you got to. Just, just use this opportunity to learn, do what it takes to get Xdebug going too. You'll find it's really, really easy. Number two, 
review the Adobe study guide. You see, Adobe is nice to us and they share their test syllabus. So the test syllabus is a fairly brief overview as far as what is involved in taking, they're like what sections, what concepts are covered. If you don't see a concept in the syllabus, most likely it's not on the test. So you can more or less focus in your investigation, your research into this specific area. This serves as your base for the investigations. This syllabus, and I'll have the link in the description below, is absolutely critical. No matter how you plan to study, you have to review the syllabus. Number three, this is where you have a choice. You can either read the dev docs and very importantly, come up with your own practice scenarios. Absolutely critical to get hands on deep into the code using Xdebug to walk through areas of the code. Or here's option number two, you can use our prep course. We have a price inexpensively and we also have uh, discounts for depending on where you are in the world to make it even more affordable. Uh, Chris Nanninga teaches this and he walks you through highly practical real life scenarios uh, that will help prepare you to take this test. Again, that was the risk of a shameless plug there, but I've seen it help so many people achieve the certification. I kind of just have to tell you about it. The goal is to explore everything. Don't let something that you know, don't know, cause you to skip onto something else. Ah, that's too hard. I'll just, I'll, I'll deal with it later. Instead, use this as a signal that you have to drive forward and you have to keep going until, yeah, you've mastered that subject. You're like, dude, I am a rock star at this subject. Get in there, roll up your sleeve, get your hands dirty and learn the system. Number four, take a practice test. In fact, you could do this at the beginning and I would recommend that. Adobe has a practice test that's free, 53 questions. Uh, the big point is with whenever you use the practice test, do not look at the question at the answers until you are at the done and ready to take the test now. You can't look at the answers with the Adobe one, but we have practice tests on swiftauto.com. Again, I guess you might say a shameless plug here, uh, but the benefit there is we have 145 questions and uh, you can look at the answers, but please do not look at those answers until you are ready to take the test. Your last round through each one of the three, I believe it's three pools of questions. Start there. Those are the four suggestions to getting certified. One other important aspect of this is what can we expect these questions to be like? Good news is they're easy. And I'm just kidding. I mean, okay, yeah, I'm sure some of them will be easy too. I hope they're all fairly, well, a good portion of them are, are going to be easy for you. But we can break out these questions into two different styles. We have scenario-based which is basically saying, here is a problem. Here is the description of this problem. There could be code involved. What is the solution to it? Questions will have three answers on a radio button. We know what that looks like, those little circles that you can select, radio button, or it has four questions with check marks. You have to select two answers, or, um, and there might be a couple of times when they have this, there's actually five check marks where you have to select three answers. Those are no fun. Those are no fun at all. But a scenario-based question is literally walking through what information do you know about Magento? What information do you know about that you learned from this question? And then uh, what answer do you select? I'll tell you a secret here. And, and I this has hurt me before not following this advice. And I've seen it hurt a lot of other people in my conversations with them. And here it is. When you are taking the test, be a lawyer and turn off your developer hat, your developer mindset or business analyst mindset. You see, we have been inbred to, com to think about the bigger picture. We are presented with a list of requirements. We need to think about the ramifications and the other aspects, the things that are not told to us in these requirements that are presented. Now, we got to turn that off. It is, I have seen it over and over again where people fail, get questions wrong because they read into a question. Don't read into a question, be a lawyer and scrutinize the text that is there and only make your answer based off of the information that is in that question. You're gonna be much more successful. The final subject we're gonna cover is what does it take in order to schedule and pass the test? I'm gonna put the link in the description below. 
you just simply need to log into the Adobe Credential Management System to take your test. Scheduled to take it. It's all pretty easy. It's right there. Uh, the big thing you have to remember is you got to do this in a pristine and quiet environment. You cannot do this when you know, there's all coworkers and people running around or kids or whatever. It has to be in a nice, quiet environment. Uh, it has to ideally clean off your desk because they might have you take your laptop and show it around the room to make sure there's no hidden, well, I guess a hidden camera would be hidden, but like, don't do that either, please. Make sure that, you know, that nothing obvious is sticking out as far as cheat sheets or anything like that. Don't do that either. Uh, and by the way, question dumps, they're worthless. Why are they worthless? Well, because uh, you can't really prove that these questions on the test. And by the time you memorize the questions that are on these dumps might be have memorized the wrong questions. And so instead of spending the time actually learning the software, you spend your time learning questions and those questions might not even be right in the first place. So practice tests, fantastic, great, do it. Uh, question dumps, uh, don't do that. Practice tests literally are there to help expose areas of weakness. I am going to give you a little tip how I take my tests. It goes like this. I take my tests in three rounds. Round number one is quickly getting through this test to see what am I up against? You see, there is two minutes per question when you take the real test, which is about a little over two hours at the end of the day. Work through every question in the first 20, 30 minutes, give or take. Your goal is to knock it out and get an answer down for everyone. There's going to be ones you don't know the answer to. You're going to check a box there that says mark for review and get on to the next one. I've heard of a number of people who spend so much time on all these questions going through the test, they get to the end and they're out of time. Now, Adobe has gradually increased the amount of time over, over through the course of the, the years that these tests have been in existence, and you probably wouldn't have that happen to you. But either way, this is still, I believe, very sound advice. Get through that test as quickly as possible. See what you're up against. Mark the questions you do not have an answer for, but still check the answer you think is most reasonable. Round number one is what I call that triage round. You're seeing what you're up against. What? How difficult is this test to be going to be? And if you get to the end, it's like, ah, oh, shoot. I, I've marked half the questions on this test. How am I ever going to pass it? Well, yeah, I feel for you. I really do feel for you. I'm sorry. That's, that's not a fun position to be in. I've been there myself. Second round, go through each one of those marked questions and spend a good amount of time trying to identify what's going on with this question. Why don't you understand it? What is there that's being said? Read the question very carefully. You can't read it out loud, but read it as loud as you can in your mind. Try to figure out what are those missing key points. And the cool thing is when you go through this round on this, go through the second round, it's literally impossible. I know Adobe tries, but it's literally impossible to not have one question help answer another question. You've seen the full picture now. It could be that there is a piece of information in one of the question uh, scenarios that might actually help answer another one. Yeah, I pretty much every, every test I take, there's going to be at least a couple answers that are helped out, that help out other answers. Uh, so that's round two. Your goal is to uncheck every single question in that and just watch the clock, but take as much time as you need to do that. Now, the third round is just as important. Perhaps it's uh, maybe a little more important. Double check. Go through and question yourself or reread every single um, question as if it was fresh. Try to block out your selected answer or answers and see what does it take to answer this question. I consistently, I I change my answers to at least three different questions. But the key point here is not to double guess yourself. Usually the first answer is correct. At least that is the case in my experience. And that seems to be fairly common uh, knowledge across the board. Yes, it might, be the, it might be correct, but see what new information you dig up when you read this question again. It could be that you missed a word in your original reading of this. And then at that point, yeah, you have a very legitimate case that you have built into your mind that you have to change your answer because you misread that. Uh, and that's probably the best example, but I have definitely seen people who go through, they double guess themselves and guess what? They failed the test because uh, they, 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 they just couldn't decide on the right answer. And when they 
gave me like an overview of what they thought the question roughly was and the answer that they chose the first time and the second time, usually that first answer was correct. Again, I don't want to hear specifics ever, but just the rough ideas, uh, it usually was that the first answer was correct. Thus, be very careful to stick with that. And, and if you do change your answer, make sure you have a really, really good reason as far as why you should change that. Finally, I want to close this video out with a quick tip here. If you pass the professional exam, uh, certification with 80% or more of a, a, a score, I would suggest you go ahead and start immediately studying for the expert certification. You're close. You are really close to getting it. Now, I'm not saying the expert certification is easy. It's definitely not at all. But it's critical that, that you take this level because you are so close. It's not like you have to go through through a full another phase of study, you've already invested at least half the effort, if not more, to getting this expert level certification. So yeah, go ahead and do that. Finally, if you fail a test, as the wonderful sales coach Zig Ziglar said, failure is an event. It is not a person. The worst thing you can do is say, oh, shucks, I'm a failure. I can't, I can't pass these tests, these tests. I'm just, I am a terrible developer. No, don't say that. If you fail a test, yeah, pick up the pieces and immediately go back to start studying again. Give yourself a week or two, study, find the areas that you were oh, that you were struggling with, brush those up and go take that damn test again. Because guess what? You'll pass it this next time. The worst thing you can do is to delay, give it three weeks and then say, okay, fine, I'll start studying. You just lost all the knowledge you gained. Don't do that. You, you're in drive mode. Keep the pedal to the metal and you will get certified. I can promise you that. So here is everything you needed to pass and achieve that professional developer certification. I wish you the best. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions. I'd be more than happy to help you.